Hello, and welcome to the second episode of the Beginnings of the National Catholic Center for Holocaust Education podcast series. During this series, we will focus on the history of the center, as well as some stories from the beginning stages of the center's formation. We will be interviewing folks who have been involved with the center from the early beginnings and who have been impacting the center in a productive way. Today, we have Sybil Schwartz, who was a key individual in the inception of the center, as well as Sister Gemma Del Duca, who is a Sister of Charity and co-founder of the center. As two of the originators, Sybil and Sister Gemma were the hostesses of the first Sabbath dinner held for the Sisters of Charity in 1987. From then on, their support in advocating for the center has been unwavering. Keep listening to hear some of the great insights and stories that Sybil and Sister Gemma have to share. Good afternoon and welcome to our second podcast regarding the founding of the National Catholic Center at Seton Hill University in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. We have with us today, um, Sister Gemma Del Duca and Sybil Schwartz, both of whom were early founders of the center, particularly Sister Gemma Del Duca. I am Marilyn Sullivan Cassetti and I'm the director of special projects here at the center. We are going to have a conversation about the early days of the center. Please describe your first memories of hearing about the establishment of the center. Sybil, please start. I would be glad to start. Thank you for taking the time to be the host of this um, podcast, Marilyn. So I think my starting will be is when I came to work at Seton Hill in the late 70s, And during the 80s, Sister Gemma and I began to get to know each other. We became um, colleagues, and it was um, a time where both of us were learning and growing in our work at Seton Hill. So Sister Gemma um, has been very instrumental in many people's lives, and in mine also. And I think at this point, what I'd like to do is to turn it over to Sister Gemma to talk a little bit about her first memories of how the the Institute started. Thank you, Sybil, and uh, thank you, Marilyn. Um, It's a pleasure to be here with Sybil um, because actually we were a gathering at Seton Hill in August of 1987. And when I say we, I mean the Sisters of Charity. So our congregation was gathering and uh, they had suggested that I um, try to organize a Sabbath meal. And uh, I felt that uh, at first I felt that would be abs- not possible, but a friend in Israel said, well, if I didn't do it, we wouldn't have the experience. So I made contact with Sybil and I asked Sybil if she and uh, her husband, Charlie and their sons, if they could come and be our Sabbath family and uh, direct us in how to celebrate uh, a Sabbath meal and the joy of the Sabbath of Shabbat. So that's how Sybil happened to be with us that Friday evening uh, with Charlie and with one of her sons, Lonnie. And it was a wonderful gathering. Uh, She had given uh, instructions about uh, how to set the table and with the candles and the lighting of the candles. But she had also said that we should have a menorah that uh, had six candles, six places for candles, so that we would remember the uh, suffering and and the uh, Holocaust. So the six million who died during the Shoah. And and we did, we had that on a special uh, stand. So they were our, um, you might say, Sybil and Charlie were the host and hostess of the Sabbath meal. And I'll I'll stop there maybe, and Sybil, you can pick it up. Well, after the meal ended, uh, Sister Gemma tells the story of how she and I start to exchange ideas. 
um, <laughs> my husband Charlie and my son Lonnie went and did their own thing, and Jim and I, sister Jim and I, kind of did our own thing of always liking to get together and and chat and exchange ideas. And I think during that period of time, um, we talked about the need to really, from a Catholic standpoint, Christian standpoint, of how people other than Jews could we would step up and make reference to how the why the Holocaust could even occur. And that began our discussions. Sister Gemma, did you want to add anything to that? No, I think, yeah, that was, uh, uh, yeah, it was a rather in, informal discussion, nothing very, uh, you know, we hadn't, we hadn't planned it, that's, I don't think. I, I think that perhaps the fact that you had uh, said we should remember uh, through this, through having uh, the candelabra with the six candles. I think that kind of was in both of our minds so that we began talking about it. And I, and I, I mentioned that, that um, because I'd been living and working at Tel Gamaliel with Father Isaac Jacob, that um, having Catholics study about the Holocaust was really one of the, the um, goals that he had in mind for the work that we had been doing in Israel. And so Sister Gemma and I continued to talk about this. And then we thought that, well, maybe this had a little merit that we could take to Sitton Hill administration. So we had our, our first meeting at a, at a little place in Greensburg called um, Baggy Knee. <laughs> and I remember... It, it, it was a small restaurant, not very well lit, as I remember it, and we sat there trying to take notes, and we talked about, in very general terms, like, what could this be, or was this a possibility, you know, and Sister Gemma was the one, you know, must have hit, you know, been really important to her, because she immediately related to the idea of doing something um, with the idea, so we took notes. You know what we thought, and the first person, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Gemma or I, said we need to, you know, really get this to administration. And I was yeah. no longer working at Seton Hill, um, I had no. moved on to a position in healthcare. And um, so she said, but, I'll talk to jo um, Dr. Joanne Boyle, who was uh -huh. the president of Seton Hill. Yeah, and is that correct? Is that yes, that's our that's right, yeah, yeah, it was, you know, um. Sybil said we have to go to uh, Dr. to Joanne Boyle, and um, who had just become president of Seton Hill, and uh, it, you know introduce her to this idea. So, um, you know, the I had to do my best to get an appointment with uh, Dr. Boyle in those very busy first days of her administration. I I, I don't know how I managed it, but somehow I did, and. Uh, I, I think partly it was due, though, Sybil, to your, uh, you kept, though you weren't at Seton Hill, but you kept calling me and telling me now, did you get the appointment? Uh, when will it be? <laughs> you know, so uh, she, she kept urging me. So I, even if I wanted to try to forget about it, I couldn't because she, she really kept pushing me to, to go in to see Joanne, which I did. Mm-hmm. And that actually time, brings that okay. actually brings me to my second point, which was to ask, and you folks are moving along on it very well. Sort of, what was your role in helping to found the center? Um, Sybil, could could you tell? Could you elaborate on your role with Sister Gemma in helping to found the center? My role was to collaborate with Sister Gemma. So one of the first things she asked me to do among other things, was to get in touch with a gentleman named um, Eugene uh, Fisher. And um, he was associated at the time um, with um, the bishops in the United States and had a link with the uh, papacy from what I understood and read. And so she kept saying, Sister Gemma kept saying, you have to call him, you have to call him. And I didn't know him. And um, being the director, he being the director of the Secretary for the Catholic Jewish Relations of the United States Conference 
Catholic bishops was a very busy man. And for some strange reason, I was able to be patched into him and, and talk with him. And we had a lovely conversation, which was written up in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette to a little bit. Um, and he said that when I, when I told them what the dream of Seton Hill was to, to perform at that time, and I'm not sure why Sister Gemma chose him until after, you know, recommended we be there. It gave Seton Hill, you know, some clout, so to speak, that we had some a bigger acknowledgement for the possibility of um, doing it because Mr. Fisher said, in, you know, I'm quoting now from the Pittsburgh Press, and told the press that what Seton Hill had proposed, I think is a potentially very significant, not only locally, but nationally and internationally, as, as a place where scholars of Holocaust and Catholic teachers can bring their material and experience and share those and learn. He went on to say that, um, he, that he was not aware of anything like this happening any place else. Um, and that this institute that we were talking about that Sister Gemma was going to take to um, Dr. Boyle should be perceived as a positive step on the part of Catholics towards working closer with the Jewish community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, um, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, so, uh, yeah, um, I think, you know, I, I don't remember, remember that as well as um, Sybil does, but um, I think probably what I needed was some official person to say that this idea wasn't, you know, something that was not going to succeed or that it was uh, not based in reality or needed and so on. And that's why, you know, calling him was, was important. Uh, but the other piece of that, I think, was that uh, Dr. Boyle then, Joanne, uh, because she was so new, said, I have to take this to the board of, uh, board of trustees. And so she took it to her board of trustees. And, and I think that three important people who were on the board of trustees at that time were um, Stanley Gumberg, uh, Bob Robert Davis, and uh, Don Moritz, uh, three gentlemen all involved in, um, uh, you know, very important business enterprises. And, um, and, and, and all of them were Jewish. And of course, that would be the test to see what they thought of the idea. And when they approved of it and supported it financially, uh, I think that, that that gave her the assurance that we could begin to try and uh, give some life to the idea and to, you know, to concretize it. And the Pittsburgh Post Press said when they were interviewing the, uh, Mr. Fisher that the timing that's getting started almost seemed miraculously perfect. That, you know, was coming together when the Christians and Jews really needed this. And then Seton Hill was going to be the first in the country be able to pull together scholars, educators, lay people to really look at you know this. I think what also is significant about what the story that Sister Gemma shared with us is that Seton Hill, for many years prior to the Holocaust Center, had reached out to the Jewish community to the, to such an extent that they had Jewish people, Jewish folks on their board. And when they heard this, they also understood the significance of a Catholic college, you know, college at that time, university now, to do something in this manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Besides the people you have mentioned, who clearly were all very important in the founding of the Holocaust Center here at Seton Hill, who were who are other important people that you worked with during the early stages of the center's creation? Sybil, could you start, please? Well, besides from Dr. Boyle, another important person for me was my rabbi, Rabbi Jason Edelstein from Temple David in Monroeville. <laughs> Doing something like this was all new to me, and I was um, a little concerned about going forward with it. And he and I talked every night on the phone about this because of 
my concerns? Was this the right thing to do? And he completely encouraged me to move forward. I remember saying to him at the time, Rabbi, do you think this is the right thing to do? And he said, I know, you, I know that you and Sister Gemma feel very strongly about it, but you're going to really know in 30 years from now if it was meant to be. And here we are over 30 years ago that this <laughs> happened and, we're, and yep. the center is strong. Mm -hmm. Sister Gemma? Uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. I mean, here in the in the states, um, uh, we I left pretty quickly. I mean, Joanne was the one I really spoke with, and I left rather quickly for Israel in order to try to make contact there. And so, uh, of course, um, I spoke with Isaac, Father Isaac Jacob about it, and, and he encouraged me, and uh, that took me to the Hebrew University because I thought. Uh, that that would be the place we would want to connect with the university. And when I went there and spoke, the dean, the, the man I wanted to speak with wasn't there, but someone else wasn't. I'm sorry, but I do not remember his name. And, and, and in any case, he said, look, you, I think you want to speak with someone from Yad Vashem. And Shalmi Barmore, who's in charge of education at Yad Vashem, just happens to be here this afternoon. So do you want to see him? And I said, yes, of course I do. He said, well, you'll have to wait a little. I said, I'll wait. So um, that afternoon then, I, I spoke with Shalmi Barmore and uh, he said, well, um, you have time to come over to Yad Vashem with me? And now it's a, it's a bit of a distance from the Hebrew University on Mount Scopus to Yad Vashem. But I said, I, I, have, I have the time. So um, we went over to um, Yad Vashem, which was not the Yad Vashem we see today at all. Much more, uh, I mean, very simple, a simple building and uh, simple office where we, where we then spoke about the, the possibility of a, of a program. So he, yeah, that was, I think, a, a very, you know, it was very important that and, and Shalmi was very positive about the idea. So that meant that we had a, a contact in Israel which and at the World Center for the Study of the Holocaust, which was also very important for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What other important things do you wanna tell me about the early days of the center? Sybil, please. I think that the sense from my perspective, and I think Jim, Sister Jim is also, is that the sense is started from the heart and from, and from a mission with, to try to do something, make the world a little better, and to try to increase conversations among and between Jews and non-Jews, and to do it in such a way that it would be constructive and go on to for future generations. So it was not done from a business plan perspective in any way. It was done from the heart of two, clo two close friends, Sister Gemma and Sybil, who just really wanted to see if we could do a, something, li a little thing to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Sister Gemma? Uh, well, well, I think, uh, you know, um, action. We wanted some kind of action and um, uh, so first of all, we, we needed somebody on the campus at Seton Hill. And um, since uh, Mary Noel Kernan, Sister Mary Noel Kernan, had been in Korea and had come to Israel and had been with me in Israel for almost a month and, and over the years had talked with me and we had been friends and so on. Um, I, I don't know if I recommend, but anyway, in, in our conversations or in our communications, uh, the, the idea was that she would represent us on um, the Seton Hill campus. So I think uh, the um, presence of Sister Mary Noel Kernan was very important in, in those early days um, because we needed somebody there who could um, be there and, um, 
have some idea of what we were talking about. She knew where Yad Vashem was. She'd been there and uh, she knew something about, you know, the importance of Jewish Catholic dialogue. So uh, that she was a very important link, I'd say, in those very early days when we started mm -hmm. um, about the Holocaust. And among those people who came was, uh, I'm pretty sure, was Eugene Fisher. So, uh, so that was, you know, that was important that even though we didn't have anyone coming in 88, we did have the, the conference which got things started and people interested and in moving. And um, yeah, it was, it, it was an important first, first step and first action for the center. Yes, certainly I would agree with both of you. In your opinion, what was the founding vision of the center? Sybil, please first. I believe the founding vision was to bring Jews and Christians, Catholics together to talk about what caused, what was the ideology of anti-Semitism and what could, be do, what could we do differently going forward with future generations to try to erase misunderstandings and bring people together. And I think that was basically, from my perspective, that was what, what the whole mission was. Sister Gemma? Um, well, yes, I, I think, um, yeah, a Jewish Catholic dialogue, um, Jewish Catholic dialogue, why, why, was, why were we interested in Jewish Catholic dialogue? I mean, it, it was a way in which to overcome anti-Semitism and uh, also, uh, for me, who had been living in Israel for a number of years, a few decades, I wanted it to have some connection with also with the state of Israel. And uh, so um, that I also felt, I felt was important to the founding of the center that, that um, Jewish Christian dialogue would not just take place in the United States, but that we would involve people also in, in the study of the Shoah and in the state of Israel. Um, so that, that was also, uh, yeah, ex extremely important. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, how has the work and mission of the National Catholic Center for Holocaust Education changed over the years. Sybil, please. I think we have become broader. I think the mission has become more encompassing. And I think we are beginning to move our initial vision of Christian Jewish relations to look on how, what impact it has and can have in the future on other minorities that are you know, impacted by hate and other types of issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yes, I, yeah, I agree with uh, Sybil. Um, you know, from, from the Holocaust, we are, I mean, we still focus on the Shoah, but we also encompass other genocides because genocide has become such a, an issue in the, in the world today. And, um, and then various aspects like women and, and the Holocaust, the children in the Holocaust, all of these were areas that uh, we focused on, especially in the conferences. And also, of course, in publications so that it goes out to um, Catholic colleges and universities throughout the United States and hopefully throughout the world. But um, so it, the, it, it's of course expanded far beyond what we had envisioned in our small way back in 1987, I think, but, uh, and, and rightfully so that it should expand. And of course, the teaching of the church too has, you know, we have had documents that have been produced since 1987. So that have um, supported uh, the work and the theology of uh, Catholic Jewish dialogue. One of the things I, one of the questions I asked Mr. Fisher at the time was, is this something 
you think that the Pope would want to see happen um, in my first conversation with him? And he said, yes. And then to the Pittsburgh Press, he said, at the time, back in 87, 88, he said, the need is crucial and the timing is almost miraculously per perfect. Somebody needed to do it now. And Seton Hill stepped up. Well, very interesting. Well, thank you both very much. Any last comments? Sybil? I, the more I became involved with the Holocaust Center, the more I became in love with Seton Hill and their willingness to take on issues beyond their boundaries and to do something to make a difference in the world. Thank you, Sister Gemma. Uh, well, I'm I'm am I'm amazed at uh, how uh, under the leadership now of Dr. James Peharic, how um, you know this the center has expanded and um, has really met the needs, has met contemporary needs, and um, is a focus for you know issues that are so relevant in in our society today. So um, that's very, uh, I mean, it, it, it seems to me that it has, you know, gone well beyond its original intent, but uh, it, it's, it's like a flower that has uh, blossomed and continues to grow and, and under, but under, a good direction, and I think that uh, um, Dr. Peharic has given it in the last few years just uh, uh, wonderful and creative. He's been he's been wonderful and creative with the the work that had that was done in the years before. So it's very I think it's very gratifying and um, to see how it has grown and continues to grow. And, and serves really a purpose um, uh, for the university and uh, for the community at large. And I, I think, in, and for the church. So, and especially in, in the field of education. So um, anyway, <laughs> I could go on. I don't want to do that, but so would you. But you know what, so I, I wanted to say add one thing that, uh, um, that. One more comment, please, Sybil. I would concur with Sister Gemma about the leadership of Dr. Beher. He has brought an organization, a mission, and a vision to the center. And it kind of goes along with Rabbi, what Rabbi Edelstein had said to me 30 years earlier. You know, yeah. is this something that was to be? And I think the answer is, and how the center has evolved to be something greater than the little seed that it, st it started as. All righty. Well, thank you both very much. Thank you for joining us.